Today is day 154 of Blender. It is also July 11th, 2022. It is Monday. And today I'm going to do again another tax animation. I can't get enough of these. Like, they're so good. All right. So today I have an idea. I think I'm going to do something like I'm shook and then I'm going to shake the word shook. Okay. So I'll go and open a general. I'll go to geometry nodes, kind of hide the spreadsheet, click on new to add a new geometry node, open the, um, properties panel and change the geometry node system to be something like text. So that's the name of my geometry node system. I will disconnect the cube, which is the input from the output so that I won't be able to see it in the layout because it's not going to be outputted. And then I'll do shift A and get a string to curves node because um, string is another way for text and that's what I want to see. And then um, it's changing it to curves so that I can use a specific node that can only be used with curves. And so each letter in my string or in my text is going to become a curve um, and so they're going to be known as curve instances and then we'll be able to see it if I insert it into the geometry and the output but right now I don't see it because I never specified the curve um not the curve but the text so I'll do like something like I'm shook all right so now that happens and then in order to see it properly I'm going to just go to object Properties change the rotation to 90 on the x, so that I go to 90 degrees across the x axis, which is the red one. Um, and then in order to fill it, I'm going to do Shift A and search for Fill Curve. And that is um, a node that only works with curves, which is why I changed the string to curves, right? Um, and then if I go to wireframe mode at the top, I notice that it's very, very messy looking. But if I change the full text and gods, it fixes things up a little bit. All right, and now once I use this um, node, it turns into a mesh because I added a face, right? When I have faces, right, to the um, curve, it becomes a mesh. So then I'll do Shift A, and now I can do extrude mesh, which gives some thickness to the text. And I'll change that to 0 0.1. And if I want to control it um, in a better way than just changing it here in geometry nodes, I can just go and connect the value to the geometry to the group input, and then I'll be able to see that over here in the um, modifier uh, properties panel over here, and then I'll be able to control it over here. So, oops, what did I just do? Okay, so now notice though, if I turn to the back, it's not filled anymore. Um, so in order to fix that, I'll do Shift A and search for Join Geometry so that I can join both the Fill Curve effect and the Extrude Mesh effect. So if I just join the Fill Curve, now it's both filled at the front and in the back. All right, and then I'm going to go real quick back to String to Curves, and I'm going to go here where it's the font, and I'm going to click on the folder and search up Arial Black, change that, right? And that's pretty much it for the visual. Um, okay. And then at this point, um, now I'm going to work on moving it. So I'll do Shift A and the Translate Instances and put that in there. And that's just going to move um, my string. So if I move it on the X, it's going to move left and right. Y is up and down. And then Z is back and forward. So I'm just going back um, and put that at zero. But I don't want my text to just move all at the, like, all at the same time and it all have an axis. So in order to fix that, um, I'm going to click on the layout and then do Shift A and go to Empty and add a plain axis. Go back to the geometry nodes by, by clicking on the text and I'm going to the outliner, which is where all of my objects are. I'm going to just click on the Empty and then just bring it down in here. And that is what I'm going to use to control the movement of each individual letter. Um, so I will do search of Shift A position and that's going to give me the position of each letter or each curve instance. And I'm just going to calculate the distance by getting a vector math node because I'm calculating the distance between two shapes, right? One is the um, letter and the other is the empty. And that distance, oops, change out the distance, is going to be the, um, that value of the distance is going to be the value of how much it's going to translate, how much it's going to move um, relative to the empty. But I don't want it to just move. If I grab the empty now and I press on it, I press G to grab and then X to grab on X axis, I notice that it moves really weird. So I want it to move like up and down. So I'll just press escape while I'm holding that so it goes back to its original position. 
and I'll do Shift A and then just um, search up Combine X Y Z. Put that right in there, and that should connect. And then make sure that the value is connected to the Y, not the X. And now, if I press G and X to grab, it moves up and down, which is really really cool. Um, but I'm thinking maybe I don't want it to move up and down. Huh, I'll find, I'll edit it later. All right, but notice the closer I am to the letter, the lower it is and the farther I am from the letter the K the higher it is well I want the opposite right so I'm going to do shift A and get a color ramp and put that kind of over here and I'm just going to select both color ramp over here and go to triangle and now if I do G right the closer I am it goes up and then the farther I am it's the letter is lower right which is what I want okay and then um if I go at a constant speed, I notice that they're all moving at the same speed. They're going up and down at the same speed, and I don't want that. I want it to be very, a little bit like, um, you know, I want it to go up really fast. What's going on? I want it to go up really fast and then slow down here at the top and then go down really fast. Because in a mountain, right, you go up and then you're slowing down because it's zero, you know, when something like a rocket goes up, it stops right at zero and then it goes back down or something. Not a rocket, but anything you throw up in the sky like a ball. Um, that's kind of the concept that I wanna, it's like having to affect here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna do shift A and then search up the float curve, put that in there. It's kind of the same thing, it's kind of a curve here. You just click on it and you just kind of move it over here. So now if I do G and next to grab the empty, right? It's going, if I go at a constant speed, I notice that the letters are going fast, right, as they go up, and then they're staying at the top for a little bit, at least more than they were at the beginning without this, and then going down really fast. Um, okay. So now to kind of change the height as to how far they, um, they go, I can do Shift A. And get a math node and put that in here and just change that to multiply and if I change it to something like 2 it will go even higher whoops did I do something wrong let me see what did I miss translate multiply translation geometry vector flip things I don't believe I did anything wrong. The Y goes into Oh, isn't this what I had the other day? Oh my god. That's what I had the other day, but that's not what I want right now. Hmm. Weird. Let me think real quick. Hold on. Um, color ramp, flow curve, combine it with a multiply by two, translate instances, group geometry, extrude, fill the curve. Position, distance, object information. Is there anything that I'm forgetting? Oh, it's because I put it after. It's supposed to be before. Okay. Let me disconnect this and something like that. Put that, oops, put that right here and then go here. And then if I do G, there we go. All right. So um, the reason that wasn't working is because I had this after. The combine X Y Z, and the like. The problem was that it was going in a weird direction, and this is what controls the direction. And so I want, I would like that to be last, or that should be last, right? Because um, everything that has to do with the value is here. This is all about the value, and that value is what's being inputted into the direction, and that's what's being inputted into what how is it translating. Um, 
So yeah, so before combined XY is where we want to put it. Okay. Anyway, um, let me see. So GX, so now I have this, but I don't, I'll get to that in a second. So now to set the material, I'm going to do something like, let me go to colors. Start the generator. Maybe something like blue and icy. Ooh, but it's not. Actually, maybe yeah. Maybe I'll do this. All right. Um, and then I'll do Shift A to set material and put that right in there. And we'll come back after. I'm gonna go back um up here to shading, and I'm gonna just do Shift A, search up for object info, and then I'm going to search up color ramp. And um, I'm going to connect the color ramp to the base color. And then I'm going to select this little tag and just paste that color in the hex right there. And um, I'm not going to be able to see it. Um, make sure you're in material viewport. And then also, if I go to geometry notes, now I can go back here and select that material. And then I'll be able to see it. Um, and shade it over here so you can see kind of that color. Um, and then I'll just go and pick another color. Like this one over here, select that and just go to hex, paste that in there. Alright, and then let me go and pick another color. Just click add, select the tag, hex, paste it in there. And then something like this. Add, select tag, paste. Alright, now notice that the um, letters are kind of in a gradient and I only want them to use the exact colors that I want. So instead of a linear, I'm going to change it to constant. And then I'm going to make sure that it's random. So now you can see that the colors of each letter are random. Um, but I maybe don't. I think that's good. All right. Um, so that's fine. And then at this point, I'm going to go back to geometry nodes. And this is the part where I'm experimenting because I haven't done this before. So bear with me. I kind of want the word shook to shake, right? So I do GX, it's going up and down, but I kind of don't want it to go up and down. I want it to go left and right. So maybe, oh my God, you know what I should have done? Not this. I should have just done if I duplicate this, could I just have the same geometry notes? I can. Hmm. It will it affect the string? Oh my god, it does. What if I just do Control Z, go to Object Relations? Where is it? Relations, relations, relations. Make single user object data materials, but I don't think that accounts for geometry node system. Yeah, it doesn't. Hmm. I could always just copy and paste them. I think what I want to do, if I only want the word shift to shake, then I only I don't want to do anything with the IM. So what I'll do is I'll do control Z. Right? And then I'll just change this to shift. By the way, um I could also put this over here. To kind of change what it says over here. Um, Alright, so shook, and then I'll just do G, X, and then I'll just um, copy this, and then I'll create, I'll go to layout and create a new cube, shift A, right? And then I'll go to geometry notes and click on new, and then just disconnect. Well, actually, I'll delete everything, or not, like, it doesn't let me just paste that in there. Put this, um, for the input here. Oops, actually, that's not what I want. What am I doing? The geometry. Okay. I don't need any of this because this is all movement. So, X to delete. And then this, I can just bring over here. And then I don't need this, X to delete. And then this is just gonna be the word um. And then object properties for 90 degrees. All right, so that's not gonna move now. Um, 
Okay, perfect. So only this is gonna move. All right, and then at this point, I'm gonna get the shook, and then I believe I can change that over here with the movement. So maybe if I do X, and then I do something like that. Okay, something like that, right? And then I can control the multiplier value by decreasing it. Oops, that's crazy. You know what? Um, I'm going to just go to the scale and say that the scale is going to be what actually determines my multiplier value. Um, and I'll just now scale it real low and see if I do that. But I need it to be faster, so I guess I'll have to... Oh my god, what if I just do the O's to shake? That would be clever. It needs to be really, really small, the scale. So now if I scale the empty, GZ, and then well, GX, it shakes like that. Oh my god, this is gonna be perfect. But I need it to be smaller because I don't want them touching each other. And then I guess I'll have to do that 5,000 times in the animation for it to actually work. Maybe I could just do it a little bit. Something like that, right? They're not touching each other that much. Okay, that's good. The scale value, by the way, is um 0 0.059, just in case. I should probably screenshot that if I want to replicate one day instead of having to download the Blender file or watch the video again. Have I screenshot again? Okay. Um, just get all this here. And close my highlighter. Just screenshot the scale here. All right, just copy that. Let me go real quick to my Blender library and um, duplicate. Put that at the top. Change this to day 154. Delete everything and just paste that in there. Okay. All right. So then um, now, right, that I have that, I'm going to animate it now. So I'm going to press N to get out of here. Actually, I should turn on my shortcuts. All right. So go back to layout. I'm going to animate this now. Um, but first, I'm going to add a backdrop. So I'm going to do Shift A, plane, S to scale. G to grab and then X to grab on the X axis as I'm pressing G. So GX a little bit like that. Edit mode to I'm um, going to edit mode. I mean tab to press Y can't even speak. Tab to get into edit mode. And then I'll select edge select over here, top left icon, select the back edge, E to extrude, and then Z to extrude on the Z axis, which is the blue one. And then I'll select the whole thing and after getting outside, um after getting back to object mode, right? And then S again to scale, and then X to scale on the X axis. And then I will go here to modifier properties, which is the wrench icon, and then bevel, and then increase the amount, um, and segments, right click, shade smooth. Okay, that's it. Um, I will go here to uh, the materials, click on new, which is like the dartboard icon, and just make it white. Now I'll be able to see it here. And then I'll go to the light and make it a sun. And then change the strength to three. This will like a shadow. And then do G to grab and then Y to grab on the Y axis, which is the green axis. And then R to rotate. Okay. And now onto the animation. So if I go back to um, my animation, uh, let's see. I want it to shake. So oh, where's the empty? Oh my god, it's literally right here. So small. All right. Um, I want it to be eighty frames, so I'll just change it from two fifty to eighty. And then I want it to. I'll press on N right to pull up my end panel. And the location I want it. Okay, so I'm gonna press G, not the. Oh my God, the empty. I'll just select it on the outline if it's too small. I'll press G and then X to move it right before it starts affecting the letter, like S. Okay, so something like right about here. So then I'm going to hover over that position in the x axis, right, which is like negative 1.3355. And as I hover over it, I'm going to press I, and that's going to insert that keyframe, that location 
in keyframe one. Hopefully I was in keyframe one. Yes. And then I'm gonna go to keyframe, let's say 40. Let's see, because I want it to end. Actually, I'll go to keyframe 80 and grab the empty and then press G to grab and then go right after it stops affecting the letter K, which is somewhere around here, and hover over that position on the X axis and then insert, right, by pressing I, ins and that inserts that keyframe there. So now if I go here, Notice that it works, right? But I want a little bit more. I want it to really shake. And so in order to do that, I need, it needs to go like back and forth, back and forth between two um two specific positions, like here and here. So maybe if I right click, copy, paste. No. Let's see. It needs to create X around back here, maybe. And then insert that keyframe. Right. And then go back to the original. And then search that keyframe. So let me go back to one and then play. It needs to be faster now. So maybe I'll move this. It really does need to be faster. So I'll move this particular one maybe here. Something like that. And then I'll just keep repeating. So I'll do Shift D and move this here, shift D, move it here, let me move it kind of like this, go back to one, and just insert that, all right, and then again, select this one, shift D, we move it here, shift D, we move it here, shift D, maybe move it here, and then shift D, maybe move it here, Play that. That needs to be faster. So they need to be closer to each other. So then after this one, shift D, move it next. Then the last one, shift D, move it here. Let's see. All right, and then this one again, shift D here. This one, shift D here. So it's just like one position and the next, so something like that. All right, make, I'll make sure that this one starts, this one stops. This one starts at the beginning, this one's at the end. This one's back at the beginning. So I need this to move here and then this to be here. Oops, and then this one needs to be here. Okay, perfect. Isn't that beautiful? All right, and then I'm gonna hover over the timeline and press T and set the interpolation to linear so that it loops. Um, I'm gonna go back to keyframe one and just look at it one more time because it's so pretty. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to just press G and then Z on the um, planes to move it a little bit down. And then now I'm gonna go to, um, actually, I'm just gonna bring this down and I make sure I'm in rendered preview. And then I'm just going to do Control Alt and Pad Zero to align my camera to view like the view that I want it to render. If I don't have a numpad, I go to Edit Preferences Inputs, and then I make sure that Emulate Numpad is checked on. Okay. So Control actually to make this easier, I'll go to Front View by pressing the button under these K key and then hovering over Front, and then just doing Control Alt and Pad Zero there. Um, and then kind of just to get out of to get I can't even speak to get out of that view. I do um I can I select the middle mouse button and then to go back to that view I press on zero. Okay. So control on one press zero to set my view to get out of it. 
middle mouse button, zero to go back into it. Okay, so I kind of play around until I see what I want. But it's going to shake, so it needs to be a little bit bigger, or something like that. All right, so really the major difference here, if I go to geometry nodes, is um, it's simply just the um, the combine. Instead of the y, I, I made an x, and then also the scale, the multiply value, um, which is controlled by the scale of the empty. I just made the scale um, again 0. What was it again? Hold on. Let me select the empty in the outline because it's too small. Press N. Go to item. It was 0 0.059. That was the scale. So um, in other words, the multiplier value over here is 0 0.059. Okay. Um, that's pretty much the only difference. And then also, obviously, the animation is also different. Um, but yeah, really pretty. Okay, I think it's good. Um, now I'm just going to go to Output Properties. Okay, and then just select the folder where I want all my images to render. So I usually have them under animations. So 12, 22, and then this one is I'm shook. Okay, so I'm going to basically render 80 images, 80 frames, and they're going to be um, in the format of PNG. I'm going to do Control S to save. Um, I will save by using the date. And then I'm just going to render the animation. And then if I go to Files and I go to Desktop, Blender, Animations, basically the folder that I just selected, I should see the frames being. Um, right, um, what do you call them, rendered, right, in this file, um, or being outputted into this file. And then in a few seconds, I should be able to see all 80 frames. Um, currently, we're at 60, right? And now we are at 80. So now I'm done. I'm going to click on Exit. I'm going to scroll all the way up, go to the plus sign, video editing, video editing, and then we'll go over here and then click on add and then image sequence and then I'm gonna go to oop wrong folder. I'm gonna go to that um, folder where I have my images and all my renders are all my images. Yeah. Select the first one, scroll all the way down, shift select the last one, and then select everything in between and then add image strip. And then now if I kind of scroll over it, I can see that's what the output's gonna look like. And then I'm gonna go to output properties at the top over here. And just change, um, give it a folder to go into it. the video. Because I like the video to go into a separate folder. And I usually do it inside the folder of the images. Um, the format, I'm going to change it to FFMPEG video. The encoding is going to be MPEG for the, for the container. And then it's going to be high quality for the output quality. All right. Um, and that's it. Now I'm going to do Control S again. And then go here to render, render animation. And then it should render pretty easily here. And if I go to my files and the folder where I just told it to go to, um, this is the final result. Let me play one more time. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today. All right. Um, bye.